I thought I would do like a Q&A slash vlog. Like I do, I'd answer your questions throughout the day. <laughs> You okay? You're okay. You're okay, get up. You're okay. If you scream, that makes it worse. Ow. You're okay. <laughs> There's not even a splash of potential. Okay, the kids have food now. They're uh, yeah. set up with a little picnic. And I think they're gonna be happy for a minute. So I can answer at least one question. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Question number one. It is from the Curly Coopers. They're one of the first family vlogs I found when I was like searching YouTube, like family vlogs, I don't know what I'm doing. And I came across them and they are so cute. So go check them out, the Curly Coopers. Curly Coopers on YouTube, go check them out. What is your favorite family activity? My favorite family activity? Well, I kind of was talking about that earlier. Right now, I say riding bikes. What do you think? Okay, my daughter says mother daughter. What? You got your owie? I'll kiss it. See that little boo boo? Still hurts. Kiss it. Mwah. Is that better? It's not really a boo boo. It's not even like a scratch no. or anything. It's just like a no. little boo. It's not better? As you. Ah. My favorite activity to do as a family is yeah, right now it involves riding bikes and um, taking pictures. Like, just riding bikes would be fun. Just taking pictures would be fun. But riding bikes and taking pictures, it's like an awesome combination. The next question is from Maya Jones. And she asked me, she follows me on Instagram. Hey Maya. She asked me, um, are you homeschooling? If so, what was your reason and what are some advantages and disadvantages? Um, yes. I am homeschooling, and um, I say the advantages are the flexibility. I love being on our own schedule, being able to travel and do learning on the road. We went to DC last year and learned a lot about um, early American history. Um, we went to Utah too, my daughter say, and we learned while at the Utah Capitol. Um, I just, I love that flexibility. And the disadvantage, I think is, um, for me at least right now is, kind of just always worrying, feeling all the pressure of like, oh my goodness, am I doing this right? Doubting myself. Um, at the beginning of the year, I was definitely unsure, but I think it's gotten a little better, especially as we see the progress and math and reading. Giving up your alone time definitely will be disadvantaged in that category. Another question that Maya had was, do you remember your first date with your husband? Yes, I do. It was a blind date. Um, I had no idea what he looked like and we were going to go to a restaurant but it was kind of late at night um it was a double date and so we just went to the grocery store and bought frozen burritos and made them and my first impression was that he was um he had really big eyes he still does and i thought that he was kind of quiet maybe a little bit too quiet for me but um by the second date i was like laughing like crazy i was like all right i'm digging this guy and then by the third date i was like i'm in love I already knew it. Now we're at the park, letting the kids play for a little bit. Kind of have a headache, so I'm just chilling, and it's really windy, so I don't know how, how good this is gonna turn out. Maybe I'll just ask one question, answer one more question right here. Okay, come on, tell me that. It might be Daddy. There's Daddy. Daddy! Call him. Call him. Daddy him. just drove by. Daddy's yeah, Daddy's going home. Do you want to go home and see him? No. Yeah, that's not nice. Okay, Crazy in Love asked, 
what goals do you have set for this year? Um, so I answered, I wrote them down at the beginning of the year because I believe in writing down your goals. And I have a blog about them. I'd have to read that blog again to know them all on top of my head. Oh, but I know most of them. Okay, most of them were to wake up early at least like two or three days a week, which I was doing bad at last month, but I'm doing better at this month thanks to this vlog motivating me to wake up and finish these videos. Um, another goal is to practice piano every day, which I've been terrible at these past few weeks. Um, but I'm gonna get back into that because I wanna be able to play Disney songs around Christmas time this year for my family. And another goal I have is to drink at least 70 ounces of water a day, which as you saw in a previous vlog, I am still working on perfecting, but I am working on that. So those are my um, goals for this year. She also asked, what advice do you have for newlyweds? That's a really good question. I would say communication is a big key. Like, um, some people say don't go to bed angry. I think that's a rule that we followed in the first um, several years of our marriage and that was really good for us because it made sure that we talked about any kind of conflict we had before you know going to bed like everything was resolved by bedtime so I'd say I'd say that's some newlywed advice for you there I think she asked another question too do I find it difficult to maintain my identity outside of being a wife and mother I don't think it's hard for me to maintain my life outside of being a wife and mother for me um, my identity definitely shifted a lot. Um, not necessarily after I got married, but after I had kids. But I don't think that's just because I became a mom. I think it's because I became a mom and I had a blog about becoming a mom and was sharing a lot of that with the blogosphere. Um, so that was a lot of my identity and I think it still is, but, um, but I don't think there's anything wrong with that. And I think that um, I have a very big personality. You know, I'm a determined person. Like people know what I like besides just my kid. Like they know I'm passionate about my family, but I think a lot of people know I love photography and Disney and traveling and writing. So I don't find it very hard um, to differentiate my you know, personality outside of just being a wife or mom. Is that the question? But I would say if you, if you, if you are worried about that, you know, really take a minute to sit down and write down the things that you love, whether you do that before you have kids, after you have kids, or whenever. I mean, I, I like to do that every now and then. Just sit down and make a list of everything you love to do and why. Um, and I think that will really help you pin down what you're passionate about and maybe what you aren't spending enough time doing. I don't think you asked for advice on how to maintain your identity, but I gave you some anyway. Um, she also asked, Crazy in Love also asked, which I, Disney character I relate to the most? That is a really good question. Let me think about that. It's a cross between two characters. Um, one, I would say Tiana, not because she's black, but because she's a hard worker. She works hard for everything she's got. But really, the character I think I probably relate the most to is Goofy because I am a goofy person and I think he's misunderstood, you know? People just think he's really silly and running around being crazy or whatever, but um, he's, he's genuine, he's nice, he's just a silly guy, and I, so I, I can totally relate to that. Also, I'm just gonna throw in uh, Rapunzel too because she's a big dreamer and I'm also a big dreamer. All right, back home. Figured we could finish up the Q&A here. All right, so Allison Cassidy has a question. What factors did you weigh when it came to how much to feature your kids? And she's asking because uh, she says she's horrified about the Instagrammer gave me a hard time last summer. Okay, so basically I've had my kids' pictures stolen before. Pictures of me stolen, like pictures I've taken. Basically I um, schooled myself up a little bit on my rights as a photographer and ba and you have rights too, like everyone, even if you're taking a picture on your phone, the second you snap that picture, you have a copyright on it. That is your photo um, and no one is allowed to use that or distribute it without permission from you. But the first time it happened, it was really hard and disturbing and it made me kind of question, oh my gosh, like should I keep, you know, sharing my life online and photos or, you know, what's going on? But um, then I quickly learned, you know, how to go
go after some of those people. And yeah, last year it was really crazy. Someone kept putting a picture of me and my daughter back up over and over again, like, well, you posted it online, I have the rights to it. Um, no, that's not how it works, sorry. When it comes to how much I decide to feature now, I, um, I ask my daughter a lot now, like, hey, can I post this picture? Do you like this one? Are you okay with this one? Um, if I'm writing a story about her or something that happened between us, I read it to her and say, is that okay? Or, you know, so she's uh, pretty involved with me now on um, some parts of the blog and this vlog, you can tell she loves being a part of this. But I try not to share anything that's like too embarrassing or too personal, things like that. Man, I'm rambling on some of these answers. This is Nanka, I hope I'm saying your name right. And she said she's been following my blog since about 2011. She loves how it's evolved. Thank you so much. She said her question is, have you ever looked back and felt perhaps you shared too much? And how has the response been from those close to you and that respect? Well, in the beginning, my husband was totally against the blog. He's still not a huge fan, but he is because like, you know, I'm also providing for the family. It was, it was hard because I was blogging about like, when are we gonna get pregnant? You know, trying to get pregnant. And that was pretty personal and that was hard. But luckily um, it happened pretty quick. So it wasn't like I was writing about that for months and months and months. Because yeah, sometimes you get questions from people like, oh, so you guys are trying to have a baby. And he hated that. And he's like a private and like kind of quiet, more reserved person. So um, it's funny, I keep telling him about this vlog and I'm like, you have to be on my vlog, we have to do it. And he's like, no but he's kind of coming around. He let me film him the other day working out with the kids. Do you do it like that? Holy cow. So what was the question again? Okay, so maybe the trying to get pregnant thing was a little bit of oversharing. Um, and, but everything after that has kind of been mostly from my perspective. Um, so I don't really feel like I've overshared. <laughs> I am not like a super private person and I've, I felt pretty comfortable with the amount of stuff that I've shared. I'm Jen Odom, she asked on Facebook, how do you choose the music? Do you have to get permission? Do you always watch what the camera's recording when you're filming? Choosing the music, I like to use, uh, I think it's called freemusicarchive.org. I've used a bunch of different sites, but I like this one the most. It's, it's, I keep going back to it and I kind of have my favorite artist that I go to. But yeah, I have paid for some music in the past for some of my sponsored work, but, um, but this music, that's where I get it for my videos. So I don't always watch with the cameras recording. Sometimes I'll set it up and then I'll go do something with the kids, but most of my cameras now have the flip screen so I can see what it's recording. Um, and kind of like peek every now and then if I want to be in the video, which I'm trying to get in the video more with them. I'm still trying to figure out how to read all of the comments on YouTube. I did forget one. Okay. Scott Drew asked me, she says, I follow several family vlogs, all of them interracial, all of them unique in their own way. She says, I'm definitely one to keep watching. Thank you. Love you. How has being in an interracial marriage changed your outlook toward life in general and for your kids? I'd say the biggest thing is, especially with my kids, is being more of an advocate for families that look different than mainstream families. So our kids are growing up and seeing, you know, what our family looks like and we talk about that a lot in books and, you know, um, history and how interracial marriage wasn't always allowed. Um, so I want my kids, you know, to know about their families and their backgrounds. And I also want them to know that not all families look the same. You know, some look different like ours, some parents look similar to each other, some parents um, or families, you know, have people, maybe the parents are one race and the kids are another, maybe the parents are the same sex or, you know, um, maybe they're adopted like a teenager or, you know, there's, there's so many different family dynamics. So I think the biggest thing it has changed for me is just wanting to be an advocate for um, acceptance and love and um, compassion. I feel like that's always what I've been about, but now even more so uh, with raising my kids, I want them to be, um, I want them to be loving and to want to make a difference in the world and spread kindness. And you know, we just need, we need more of that, especially today. 
So uh, hopefully I answered all your questions. I should have like printed them out or something because I feel like I missed some. I don't know if I can see all the comments from YouTube on my phone. I'm sorry about that. So if you have any other questions for me, just leave them in the comments and I'll get to them in the next Q&A. Maybe, um, maybe I'll do one more like my last vlog or something um, for the month of March. I'm doing a vlog day this month and April, I'm not sure yet how many I'm gonna do, but um, so maybe it'll be my last one for March. We'll see. But yeah, if you have any other questions, leave a comment and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.